Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca. Today I have my most disappointing reads of 2019 and prepare yourselves because there will be more tea in this video than in my worst books of the year. <laughs> six books to talk to you guys about today that were more disappointing to me than any of the other books that I read in 2019. Now I didn't actually read that many books that I didn't like in 2019 which is always a blessing but the things about the books in today's video is that I actually had high expectations of these whether that was because they were incredibly hyped and everybody else loves them or because they just did not deliver on what I expected from them. Now I didn't even give all of these books low ratings. A couple of them I rated quite highly. I just expected more from them. I have also somewhat ranked the books today so we will be going in order of the least disappointing to me to the most disappointing to me. And hold on to your wig guys because some of these are pretty hyped books. Seeing as this video needs no further introduction I'm just going to hop into my list starting with The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. So this was a 2019 young adult sci-fi debut and this story takes place in a futuristic Disneyland. It isn't called Disneyland obviously but it is pretty much much the same thing and in this book our main character is a part human part robot equivalent to a Disney princess. In this book they are called fantasists and our main character is one out of a handful of cyborg girls who have been specifically manufactured to be entertainers at this fictional theme park. Now this story dealt with a few things I didn't expect it to, I mean it, it could be kind of implied based on the synopsis but there are hints at things like sexual assault in here. I believe that I gave this book a three stars I did somewhat enjoy it. My main issue with it is that I felt like some of the things that I expected from this book based on the synopsis were just not present. Now one of the things that I was looking forward to the most when going into this book was the futuristic Disneyland style theme park setting. Even in the synopsis it tells you about all of these great things that you can do at this theme park like guests can ride on simulated dragons and things like that. There is even a whole department of this theme park that is dedicated to bringing animals back from extinction in the same manner that these fantasy are created so we have cyborg animals in here. However this book did very much centre on our main character Anna and even though she was in the park every single day of her life wandering around entertaining guests and hosting tea parties and things like that I don't feel like we spent a lot of time in the park and I just really wanted this setting to be more explored. The way that this book was written reminded me kind of like the Lunar Chronicles. It is quite a simplistic writing style and it very much focuses on the plot of what is going on here. It is told in two times timelines as well we do have some mixed media because right at the beginning of this story we find out that Anna is currently on trial for murder. So of the two timelines one of them is Anna's day-to-day -day life from her perspective as she is working as a fantasist in the park and that is interspersed with multimedia accounts of the court proceedings. I think my main source of disappointment with this book was just that I expected more from it. We had an awesome premise here and I just don't think that it was executed very well. Next up we have Once in Future by Amy Rose Capetta and and Corey McCarthy. This book was just generally not memorable so my details on the plot are going to be a little bit hazy but this is a science fiction Arthurian legend retelling. Now I really love Arthurian legend because I find it really interesting how it is rooted in history and while it is highly unlikely it could be somewhat true. So essentially anything that is marketed as an Arthurian legend immediately has my attention and this book had an awesome marketing campaign behind it which meant that it was everywhere at the time of its release. So this book takes place in space and in this story Arthur is continually reincarnated throughout time so that he can fulfill the purpose that the first Arthur failed to complete. Now in this particular iteration Arthur has been reincarnated as a girl. Now Merlin is also present in this story but Merlin is not reincarnated. Every time one of the Arthurs dies Merlin goes into a deep sleep and is reawakened every time the new Arthur is set to begin the quest. However Merlin is aging backwards and every time he wakes up he is a little bit younger. One of the good things about this book is that it has a whole ton of diversity. Most of the characters in this story are LGBT in some way. The ones I remember off the top of my head is that there is a female female relationship in here and a lot of the characters are non-binary. The reason that I was disappointed in this story is that it is a very fast paced plot driven book but it feels like it should be character driven. While I was reading this I really felt like I should care about the characters but I didn't care about them at all. As I said this 
this book is extremely fast paced so we have a ton of action packed plot events. I generally don't like action scenes to begin with unless they are done by an author who is particularly good at writing them. A lot of the events in this book I did find very hard to follow and I thought that that wasn't helped by the fact that there was very little character or plot development in between the events. I felt like this could have been a story that I really enjoyed if there was more plot and character development because I pretty much felt like there was not a lot of motivation for any of the characters to do anything. Especially as our main character spends most of this book fighting her destiny as a reincarnation of Arthur. Now I did give this book three stars but I think I am going to go back and reduce it to two. One of my other pet peeves about this book is that it reads a lot younger than I expected to and that is not necessarily a bad thing. It could just mean that older YA is not the audience for this but I did feel in the characterization that it was very obvious that this book was being written by people who are much older than the characters in this story as a lot of it was really cheesy and really cringy and not even a little bit in a good way and I also thought that there were a lot of sexual references in here which given the tone and it being super obvious that this was written by older people it just did not hit right at all. That being said there is a chance that I am going to pick up the sequel to this because I think that the plot was solid even though the execution to me was just really not there and as well as that this is also just a duology so I do only have one book to read to finish this story. Next up we have The Umbrella Academy Apocalypse Suite by Gerard Way and Gabriel Barr. This is the first volume of the graphic novel series that the Netflix show Umbrella Academy was based on. Now I haven't consciously made a list of my best TV shows of 2019 but I think that Umbrella Academy is definitely my favourite. So I had seen this around before and as I'm sure a lot of you can relate if a book is written by a celebrity then nine times out of ten it isn't actually all that great. So I had seen this around and never wanted to read it but I loved the TV show so much I decided to pick this up. So one of the things that I really loved about the TV show was the characters. The entire cast of characters in Umbrella Academy are morally grey and I absolutely loved that about it. As well as that the TV show is extremely character driven. There is a very strong plot there as well but the plot very much hinges on you knowing and caring about the characters. Now because that is such an integral part of the plot in the TV show I expected the graphic novel to be at least somewhat similar. So the plot of the Umbrella Academy is that we follow seven 30-ish year old characters who were born all on the same day to mothers who were not pregnant at the start of that day and for some reason they all have superpowers. Now soon after their birth they were all adopted by a billionaire called Reginald Hargreaves who turned them into a band of superheroes and from a young age they were forced to go out into the world and fight crime and save the world. Now while there are some flashbacks in this story we mainly follow the these characters in their adulthood and as you can imagine from being childhood sensations with the weight of the world on their shoulders they are now carrying around a whole lot of emotional baggage. Now all of these characters have gone their separate ways but at the beginning of this story Reginald Hargreaves dies and they all reunite at the Umbrella Academy for his funeral. Not long after being back together they discover that the world is once again about to end and so reluctantly they band together to save it. Now quite obviously this is a superhero or an anti-hero story. I I typically don't really care that much about superheroes and I also don't read any superhero comics but from what I'd seen of the show I expected this to be very different than a traditional superhero graphic novel. However I was wrong. This is a very action-packed graphic novel and it is pretty much a superhero graphic novel. I felt that I didn't find out very much about the characters at all and because of the length of this and there being seven main characters plus other main side characters what I did find out about the characters did not really make me feel any particular way. Now what the TV show has done with this story is they have combined the backstory of the characters from the first two volumes of the graphic novel into one season of a TV show where the plot only covers the plot events in the first graphic novel which I thought was a very good way to do it because even though this is the same plot as season one of the TV show I felt like it didn't really make as much sense and it was very very rushed in comparison to the TV show which bulked it out, drew it out and made it cohesive and really impactful. So I guess you could say that the only reason I'm disappointed in this graphic novel is because I had seen the TV show previously. However, that may be a good thing because if I had not previously seen the TV show, this would have been on my worst books of the year and not my disappointing books. Now onto the book in this list that I rated the highest and that is The Queens of Inneslea by Tessa Grattan. And I am 100% going to hold my hands up and say that the reason I was disappointed in this is entirely my own fault. So this is an adult fantasy retelling 
version of Shakespeare's King Lear. Now I have not read King Lear so I don't know how true to the original play this is but I think from reading this book that it is very close to Shakespeare's original. So in this story we follow the three daughters of King Lear and King Lear has gathered them all together because he is going to decide which one he will name his heir. Now each of the three daughters in this book have very distinctive personality types. The oldest one is a warrior queen, the middle one is very maternal and nurturing and the youngest one is a star priestess and I would probably say she's the nicest of the three as well. So with this being a fantasy retelling I expected this to be like a standard fantasy novel where we have a whole ton of world building, a whole ton of character development and everything builds up to a couple of action scenes maybe. However this is an extremely character driven, extremely slow moving book. I cannot fault the writing in this, it's, it is absolutely beautifully written and one thing that I particularly enjoyed about this is how diversity is woven into this plot. All three of the main characters are POC, the eldest sister is trans, I have been using female pronouns because female and male are used interchangeably throughout this story but she is definitely non-binary if not trans. Now the reason that I'm disappointed in this one is because absolutely nothing happens. This is a very very slow burn, very political fantasy. There is not one single action scene throughout this entire book which is what leads me to believe that this is very much like the original Shakespearean play. Everything that happens in this book does hinge on the relationships between the characters and so it is a very slow political dramatic fantasy and not at all action based. Now the reason I say this is completely my fault is that I feel like I was disappointed in this book because I was prepared for it to be more like a usual fantasy. I was waiting for these big climatic action scenes that never came and because of that I just left this book feeling really dissatisfied and disappointed. However there is a companion novel to this being released in 2020 called Lady Hotspur that I am going to read and I'm very interested to see if I enjoy that one a lot more when I will be going into it fully expecting it to be a dramatic political fantasy. Like I said I can't fault the writing in this at all, it is absolutely beautifully written so if you love a really prosaical story with some earth magic and don't mind that it's extremely slow paced then I would recommend this one but because of what I thought it was going into it, it was disappointing to me. Now we're getting into the two most hyped books in this list, the first one being Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. So this is a 2019 release that was marketed as containing a dark romance like Alina and the Darkling in the Grisha trilogy. In this story we have three main characters, two of them are from different countries and these two countries have been at war for over a century. Our main female character Nadja is a cleric which means that she can harness the abilities of the gods, however unlike most clerics she can harness the abilities of multiple gods. We also have Seraphin who is a prince for the opposing country and he is a blood mage. So the conflict in these two countries pretty much hinges on god magic versus blood magic. Our third main character Malachias is the darkling type character in this. He is from this clandestine cult type Thing in the Blood Mage Kingdom where if my memory serves me correctly they essentially breed these monstrous like creatures for warfare and espionage and Malachias is one of those. So I went into this fully expecting it to be a little bit like the Grisha. Emily A. Duncan is unapologetically a big fan of the Grisha series and I know that it had been compared so I was expecting that. Now what I didn't expect from this is for it not to feel like the Grisha but to feel like every other young adult fantasy series that I love. There is one particular scene in this book that felt almost identical to me to Queen's Trial in Red Queen and the assassin competition in Throne of Glass. As I said the romance in this was pegged to be a Alina Darkling relationship but instead of feeling that what I did see was a lot of similarities in the relationship between Nadja and Seraphin and Selena and Dorian in Throne of Glass. So I was kind of a little bit disappointed in those aspects because the main selling point of this series is that it is very morally grey. So considering that isn't a premise of a lot of young adult series that have been released in the past, I expected this to feel different and it just felt kind of the same. As well as that I felt like I lacked a lot of concentration when reading this. I thought it was just me but I was actually reading other things alongside it and I was understanding everything that was going on in there fine. I just really could not follow this book at all. And my last gripe with this one is that towards the end there are huge reveals, plot 
plot twists and betrayals but I felt like I didn't understand any of the characters motives because there was no development in the chapters that were in between the big plot twists and betrayals which is really annoying because I really loved those moments of like utter shock to find out that characters have betrayed each other but I think the reason that I felt shock is not because it was this huge well done plot twist it was because there was no development so it literally came out of left field and I was shooketh because there was no sign of this character betraying another character to start off with because the groundwork wasn't done. That being said my enjoyment of what happens in this book was quite high and I would have rated it four stars on enjoyment because I really love some of the characters in here and I really loved the way that the romances were developing but it just wasn't executed well and I couldn't overlook that so I gave this three stars. And then the final book that I was disappointed by in 2019 is the one that's gonna have the most polarizing opinions with you guys and that was The Poppy War by R.F. Kong. Now this was the second book that I read in 2019 so my details on this one are a little bit hazy but this is the first book in a very grimdark adult fantasy series set in a fictionalized version of China. Now there are all the trigger warnings for this book because it does feature a scene that is heavily inspired by the Rape of Nanking which is a real event that happened between I think China and Japan in history. So I love grimdark fantasy, I cannot get enough grimdark fantasy, especially if we have some very compelling characters in there. I was also very excited for this book because it does have a military academy in it and I love any sort of like school or academy settings. Another reason I was really excited for this is because everybody in 2018 was saying that this was the best adult fantasy, not even debut adult fantasy, this was the best adult fantasy release of 2018 and I just... I don't, I don't get it. I, I just don't. So I want to start off by saying that I don't necessarily think that this book is bad and I don't have an issue with anybody who loves this book. There were a lot of things that were enjoyable about this book. There were a lot of things that I liked and I can definitely understand why people really enjoy this book. The thing that I didn't understand is that how people thought it was the best adult fantasy released in the entirety of 2018. That's the bit that I just don't understand. So in this story we follow Rin and Rin has adoptive foster type parents and she lives in a very poor province of her country. Her parents are trying to get rid of her so they arrange a marriage for her to this old wealthy guy who will help further their business. Rin is 100% absolutely against this and so she starts studying really hard to pass these exams which will guarantee her entry into one of the many prestigious academies across the country. However as she and her family are poor she won't be able to afford to pay for it so she does end up going to the only one that is free which is the military academy. Now the first like third of this book does take place in that military academy where Rin faces a lot of prejudice because of her upbringing and background. However the bulk of this story starts when the country that Rin is from and an opposing company starts a war and the students at the military academy very quickly learn that going to war and fighting in a real war is very different to training for war. So the plot of this, it seems pretty good. The plot of it was pretty good, I would say, but there were just, there were inconsistencies in this that I didn't like. As an example, if we head right back to the beginning where I said that her parents are arranged this marriage for her, her foster parents are not portrayed as nice people. They physically abuse Rin and are extremely unreasonable and nasty. So they arrange this marriage that is going to benefit them because they don't care about Rin at all. However, when Rin asks them if they can give her a year to learn to go to an academy, will they let her get out of the marriage? And they say yes. And that to me just immediately conflicted with the characters that they have been made out to be. I felt like some parts of this were rushed, I was really enjoying the military academy setting and then it's like a hard switch to the rest of the book. I didn't think this was especially well written, it was okay but not to the level that I expect from such a complex world. And speaking of the world, there was absolutely no world building. Aside from the actual military academy which I believe is built into the mountains, I could not tell you what any part of this world looks like because there are no descriptions of places pretty much at all. One thing that I will mention but did not impact my rating of this book because it is not the fault of the book, it's the fault of the editor, is that this book was not edited well at all. There were multiple places in the copy that I had where the same sentence was written twice directly after each other in a place where R.F. Conk had clearly started writing a sentence, gone back to revise it and 
reorder the clauses so it was written a different way but the editor had not deleted the start so for example the original sentence may have been like he walked to the shop and it had been rearranged to be like while he walked to the shop but both starts of the sentence would still be there and it was just i, I i've never seen that in a, such a hyped book before so i was a little bit shocked but like i said that did not impact my rating because that is not relevant to the quality of the story i just wanted to mention it because it was really annoying when i was reading that being said i do acknowledge that rf kong is a debut author and i feel like we very much should give debut authors room to grow as nobody is expected to be perfect at the first try at something so i do actually own the dragon republic and i do plan to read it soon and see if any of the issues i had with the storytelling and world building in the poppy world are resolved or improved upon in the Dragon Republic. So there you have it. Those were my six most disappointing reads of 2019. Please let me know what your most disappointing read of 2019 was and please also stay tuned because this video is going to be followed by my most surprising, worst and best reads of 2019. But that's about it from me today so please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. If you head to my description box you'll find links to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish body butter and candle website the instagram for that and a 10% off discount code that's it from me today guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go when nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no